let's create a new project. I'm going to use the newest LTS version of Unity, which is the 2022.3 version. I'm going to create it in URP and I'm going to name it my VR project. So once uh, Unity loaded, just go to Window, Package Manager, Unity Registry. And we need to install the XR Plugin Management. So just hit Install. And we also need to install the XR Interaction Toolkit. So click Install as well. Let's also install the new input system. So we need to restart the Unity Editor. So let's just hit Yes. Once the editor is sorted, we can close it and navigate to Edit, Project Settings, XR Plugin Management. And we need to install the OpenXR plugin. So it's installed, we see some issues. First go to OpenXR and we need to add interaction profiles. We can do that with uh, the plus button. And I'm going to add the Oculus Touch controllers, uh, the MetaQuest Pro and the Valve Index. So back to the project validation, we only see one issues left. So just click fix it. So once it's done, we need to set up a simple scene. To do that, we are going to use the Synthi Studios Polygon Starter Pack. The link is going to be in the description. It's a free to use package. So just add to my assets and, and import the assets. To do that, go to Window, Package Manager, uh, click My Assets and search for Polygon Starter, Polygon Starter Pack. And just hit Import and import the package. Yeah, we can close it now. So just go to its folder, Prefabs, and just drag and drop anything. Uh, you can see it's using the built-in pipeline. So we have to upgrade its materials to the universal render pipeline. To do that, go to Window, Rendering, and Render Pipeline Converter. And just take these and hit Initialize Converters. They will continue. So when it's done, you can see the materials it's going to upgrade. So just hit Convert as Assets. Yeah, and it's working now. Okay, we can delete this one now. I'm just going to need this view. And we are going to need to use this building floor 5x5. Five five five. So just drop it in. Uh, reset its transform and scale it a little bit on the Z and the Y axis. Okay. This one also has a simple sky dome. So just drop it in and also reset its transform. And we also have a cloud ring. Also reset just the positions, zero, zero, zero. Okay, we cannot see them. So we just need to make the dome scale a little bigger. So try, so try five. Yeah, now we can see it. Next up, to make it organized, just create a empty game object, reset its transform, and call it environment. Yeah, and drag these into it. So next up, we need to make an XR rig. So to do that, in the hierarchy, just right-click, XR, XR origin. First off, we need to set the tracking origin mode. We want it to be tracked from the floor. So, so select the floor option. And when we open it up, we can see there's a main camera. So we have to delete our other main camera from the scene. There can be only one camera in the scene. So let's do that. And as you can see, there's a left hand and right hand controller attached to the XR origin. We want to set it up by ourselves. So just delete them. So to set this up, Right click on the camera offset, create empty, reset its transform it if it's needed, and rename it to and rename it to left hand controller. And duplicate it and rename this one to right hand controller. Type both of them and add an XR controller action based script to it. So we could set this up one by one. 
with the new input system, but Unity made our life much easier. It's already created a sample one for us, the XR Interaction Toolkit. So to import it, go to Window, Package Manager, change this back to Unity Registry, and at the XR Interaction Toolkit, you can find the samples, the starter asset samples, and import it. Once it's imported, let's go back to the uh, left-hand controller, and at the, at the top right corner, there's an icon to select the preset. And for the left-hand controller, select the XRI default left-hand controller. And as you can see, it's already set this up for us. So go to the right-hand controller and do the same. Okay, there's one last thing to do. Go to the XR origin. And at the input action manager, we need to add an input action asset. To select the XRI default input action. Also, we forgot to reset the XR origins transform, so it's all the way there. So just do that, and now we can start the game and look around in uh, in the world. Yeah, it looks like it's working. We can look around, but we can't see any hands right now. So let's set that up from the Oculus integration package. So you don't have to do it; you can download it in the link is in the description. So let's import it, go back to assets and import the VR hands package and click import. So to use it, just go, go to the folder and select the left hand controller and to the model prefab, just drag the left hand prefab. Do the same for the right hand controller, just drag the right hand prefab to the model prefab. And that's it, just start the game and, and let's see what happens. Yeah, as you can see, I can see my hands and move it but there's no animation yet so let's set it up back to unity if we want to make our hands animate we are going to need an animator controller it's basically controls which animation to play we can define it by uh, our c sharp script so let's create one so at the vr hands folder just right click create uh, animation controller and call it left hand animation controller on our prefab, we have a animator component and we need to drag the animator controller to the controller field. Yeah, then double click it and it's going to open up the animator window. Here, as you can see, there's a parameter tab and what it's basically doing, we can specify a float, an integer, a bool and a trigger. And with this four variable, we can, we can control which animation to play. So we're gonna need two float values, one for the grip value and one for the trigger value. So let's create them. Call it grip, create another one, and we're going to call it trigger. In this case, we are going to use a blend tree and with blend trees, we can smoothly interpolate animation based on our parameters. So to do that, just right click, create a state and from new blend tree. So double click it and right now it's a one dimensional blend type but we got a grip and a trigger so it's going to be a two dimensional one. We are going to use the 2D freeform Cartesian and as you can see at the parameters there's two grip right now so we need to set one of them to trigger and at the motion tab here we're going to put our animations what we want to blend between so we are going to need four to so just add four at the plus icon and add motion field so our grip and trigger values are going to be between zero and one so at the position x and y we have to set it between zero and one so first we are going to use the idle animation when we don't have any movement at zero zero position so we just need to open this left hand default animation fbx and and drag the left hand idle animation to the first one in the second one we want to do a pinch animation and i'm going to set the y position to one and leave the x position at zero so at that position we are going to pinch so just drag that animation to that field and the third, when we want, want to grip, we are going to set the X position to 1 and leave the Y position at 0. And also drag the grip animation to the field. But the last one, we have to decide what happens when we using the grip button and also the trigger button as well. 
I think the best thing to do in this case is just use the grip animation because that feels more natural. So let's drag the grip animation to the fourth one as well. And the position X and Y, remember in this case, we are going to have our grip and trigger parameters at one. So just set the position X and Y. That's why we have to set the position X and Y to one. Okay, so at the trigger, just define it zero. And as you can see, uh, we are at the idle animation right now. So if you just modify the grip value, you can see the red dot is moving towards the position X1. And also if you move the trigger, it moves along the Y axis. And if you look at the blend tree, if I move the grip, you can see the which animation is started to glow a little. In this case, it's the left hand grip. If I do the trigger, then, then it slowly interpolates to the left hand pitch animation. So we are going to use this in our C sharp script based on our inputs. So to do that, we need to find out which actions we can use in our input action asset. So to find the input action asset, we just go to the assets, samples, XR interaction toolkit, the version you have, uh, starter assets, and you can find that the XR default input actions. So if we double click it and open it, we can see the control schemes and at the action maps, we just need to select the XRI left hand interaction because we are going to interact. And then we have the select and activate action. The select is basically the grip on our controller and the activate is the trigger. As you can see at the action type, it's a button which is only able to return a boolean if it's pressed or not. But as you can see, there's a select value and activate value as well, which is a value type and it's going to return a float value. So we are going to use these two actions. So you can close this now, go back to the scene and in the assets folder, go back to the VR hand and select the left hand prefab. So we are going to add the C sharp script to it. Call it, call it hand animation, new script and create an add. Double click it and it will open it. We are going to use the new input system. So type using unity and bin dot input system delete the start function we are not going to use this one now we need to read these values from our controllers so to do that we are need a reference for the input actions we could use a public variable but i like to use serialized field private variables because then we don't have access to these variables from other scripts and i just like to keep these variables less accessible so to do that i'm going to use a serialized field private and input action reference and I'm going to call this one a uh, grip reference in the update function I'm going to read the float value so to do that just uh, type grip reference that action dot read value and it's going to be a float and now it's a good practice to store it uh, in a separate variable so to do that just type uh, float and I'm going to call it grip value and now we have access to this value so to test this the easiest way is to write these values to the console to do that we so we need to use the debug.log and i'm going to insert the grip value here so if you go back to unity and click on the left hand controller you can see at the grip reference we don't have any input action reference so we just need to select the xri left hand interaction select value just remember to use the select values so it will read the float value instead of a boolean select that and enter play mode as you can see if i press the button it changes values between zero and one so if you go back to our script the only thing that left us to do is to connect the animator component to the script and and set the animator's grip parameter to the grip value so to do that we can delete the debug.log and we are going to need a animator reference to do that again serialize field private animator and call it and animator 
Okay, if we go back to Unity and select the left hand prefab, we have to drag the animator component to the hand animator field. Go back to the script, and here we are going to set the grip parameter to the grip value. Just type in hand animator that set float. And in this method, we need a string name, which is going to be the grip and the float value, which is going to be the grip value. Just bear in mind, because it's a string, we need to have the exact name of the parameter. So the, the best practice is just copy it from the animators parameters tab. I'm just going to copy the grip, go back to the script, going back to the script and I'm just going to paste it and comma, we are going to insert the float value, which is the grip value. So go back to Unity and hit play. So as you can see, now it's working perfectly. So the next thing is we have to set up the pinch animation. To do that, go back to the script and we are going to do basically the same thing. So I'm going to need another input action reference and I'm going to call this trigger reference. And at the update function, we are going to do exactly the same. So just copy and paste it. And in the update function, I'm just going to copy and paste these two lines as well. I'm going to rename it trigger value and I'm going to set that to trigger reference. And at the hand animator, we are going to use the trigger. So just remember to copy it trigger and we have to change this to trigger value. One last thing we need to do, go back to Unity, select the left hand prefab and we have to we have to have a reference for the trigger button. We are going to use the XRI left hand interaction activate value. So just select that and, and start play mode. Uh, both of the animations work in perfectly and if I use the trigger and the grip button together it's just going to grip. So if we want to animate the right hand as well. Uh, the easiest way is just duplicate the left hand controller, rename it right hand controller, select the right hand prefab and drag it to the controller field. Double click it. And we already have the grip and trigger parameters. So open the blend tree and the blend tree, we are going to change the motions to the right hand animations. So to do that, just open up these FBX files. And the first one is the idle. Then we have the pinch animation and we are going to use the right hand animation in the last two positions as well. Okay, select the right hand prefab. We need to add the script we just made. So add the hands animation script and drag the animator to the hand animator field. And again, on the grip and the trigger, we just need to select the XRI right hand select value. And for the trigger, we need the right hand activate value. And that should be it. And that's it, both of the hands are working perfectly now. So in this video, we are going to move with our character. So to do that, click on the XR origin. We need to add the component called locomotion system and drag the XR origin to the XR origin field. We also need a continuous movement provider and we have to select the action based one. So here we need to reference the locomotion system. So just drag it to the system field. And in the bottom, we need to reference an input action. We need to specify which joystick we want to use for, for the movement. Personally, I like the left hand joystick. So I'm going to use that reference. And here I'm going to use the XRI left hand locomotion move action. So I select it. And here I'm just going to leave the right hand move action as blank. We also need to be able to rotate in the word. So we have two options what we can use. One is the snap turn provider and the other is the continuous turn provider. Personally, I prefer the snap turn provider, but you can use the continuous turn provider if you like that. I'm just going to add both of them so I can show you how to properly set it up. In both cases, you have to select the action based one. So start with the snap turn provider. We need to drag the locomotion system to the system field. And at the turn amount, we can specify how much you want to turn. And at the turn amount, you want to specify in degrees how much you want to turn with each input action. So I'm just going to decrease it to around 30 degrees. And in the bottom, I'm going to use the right hand snap turn action. 
So I'm used the reference. So here I'm just going to select the XRI right hand locomotion snap turn action. In the continuous turn provider, we have to reference the locomotion system. You can set this turn speed to whatever you like. And again, I'm just going to use the right hand turn action. So here I'm just going to select the XRI right hand locomotion turn action. Okay, in my case, I'm just going to remove the continuous turn provider. I don't want to do both of the action. So in the scene we need some objects so the movement will be much more visible. So to do that I'm just gonna use some of the polygon assets. So go to its folder, prefabs, and I'm just gonna use the crate. I'm gonna increase the Y position to 0.5 and I'm just gonna make a few copy of it and also I'm just gonna stack it on top of each other. and start play mode. As you can see, I can turn with my right hand joystick, left and right. And if I use the left hand joystick, I can move around. So if you move forward, you don't have any collider on you. So you just go through the objects. So to fix that, we are going to need a, another component called character controller. And as you can see right now, it's in the ground. So to fix that, we are going to increase the center's Y position to, to 1. And right now the radius is a little too big, so we are going to decrease it to 0 0.2. So just to show you another problem, I'm just going to increase the Y position of the character and enter play mode. As you can see right now we are a little high, but if you move forward a little, you instantly fall to the ground. Right now we can we can collide with objects in, in our scene. As you can see, if I even if I'm crunching, the collider stays the same height. So first, if you want to fix these issues, uh, at the continuous move provider, uh, you can see a gravity application mode. And right now it's only calculating the gravity when we are moving. But as you can see, if we are not moving when the scene starts, we are just levitating in the air. And when we start moving, you just instantly fall to the ground. So we have to select the immediately option. So it's always going to calculate the, the gravity. The other thing, so if we want to be able to crouch and move, move under the object, we are going to need another uh, component, which is the character controller driver. So here we need to select the XR origin for the locomotion provider. I'm going to set the minimum height to 0.3. As you can see, if, if I'm crunching the collider, the collider's height is following my head. So now I can go under these objects. So that's it about the continuous movement. So now why don't we make our environment pretty? I'm just going to use the polygon assets to create a simple scene and advise you to do that as well. Try to be creative as you want to be. So see you in a bit. So this is the end result. As you can see, I'm not really good with level design, but this will do the trick. 
So if we want to grab objects, uh, we basically going to need two things. So we need an object that is interactable and also we need our hands to be able to detect that we are grabbing something. Because at this point, if we are, if we are pulling the trigger, it's only doing animation. So first we need to make our hands to be capable of grabbing objects. So to do that, just select the left hand controller and right hand controller. We are going to add the XR direct interactor. So the script also needs a collider. So it's going to detect is the interactable object is in within its collider. So to do that, I'm going to go with a sphere collider. So right now it's too big. So I'm going to reduce the radius to 0.1. And what's really important, it needs to be a trigger. So I'm just going to check this box. First, I'm just going to create a cube. Reset its transform and I'm going to set the scale to 0.1 on all axis. So just put it on the table. And I'm going to add the XR grab interactable component to this object. As you can see, it's automatically added a rigid body. At the script, the most important thing is the movement type. You can set it to three different ones. First is the instantaneous, the kinematic and the velocity tracking. So I'm going to demonstrate what's the difference between these three. So just duplicate this cube twice. And I'm going to set the second one to kinematic and the third one to velocity tracking. And I'm also going to apply a material so we can differentiate between the three types. So to do that, I'm just going to use the polygon starter pack materials plane. And I give the first one a red color, the second one a blue and the third one this yellowish black. I know it looks weird, but it's just for demonstration. And now just start play mode. So first, I, as you can see, I can grab these objects. And now let's see the differences. So I just grabbed the instantaneous. And as you can see, the movement is really smooth, but you can move through any object. So it doesn't interact with any physical object. This is because uh, the instantaneous is disabling the rigid body. So the second one is the kinematic. And this won't collide with any object that doesn't have a rigid body. So this crane right now only have, have a box collider, so it doesn't collide with it. The last one is the velocity tracking. And as you can see, it does collide with the, with the crane. So you can ask what was the difference between the kinematic and the instantaneous? Well, if you grab the instantaneous and you try to move the other cubes, as you can see, it behaves really strange. But if you do the same with the kinematic, it will behave as expected. It's also true for the velocity tracking. Okay, so that's the difference between the free movement type. So now I'm going to delete these three cubes. I'm going to add three prefab. The first one's going to be a pistol. The second one's going to be a shield. And the third one's going to be a bird. So I'm just going to rotate them okay, and I'm going to select all three of them and I'm going to add the XR grab interactable to all three of them. So on the pistol I'm just going to leave it instantaneous. The shield I'm going to change it to kinematic and the sword is going to be velocity tracking. Okay and I start play mode now. So let's grab the pistol. And as you can see, the position is really out and it's going to be the same with the shield and the third. So that's one issue. The other, if you grab the shield and you move it closer to your body and you try to move, it's going to have this strange effect. So we just exit play mode and we are going to fix these issues. So start with that strange behavior. The reason is why it's happening is because on the XR origin, we have a character controller, which is a collider and it's colliding with the shields collider. So what we need to do is just disable the collision 
between these objects. So we can do that using layers. So I'm going to create two layers. One of them is going to be interactable. And the other is going to be player. So I'm going to select the shield, the pistol and the sword. And I'm going to change its layer to interactables. And I'm going to change it to all its children. I click to the XR origin and I'm going to change its layer to player. But this time I'm, I'm not going to apply it to all of its children because if we apply it to the left hand and right hand controller, it won't be able to interact with these interactable objects. So next, and we are just going to edit project settings. And here at the physics tab, the bottom, we are going to disable the collision between the interactables and the player. So I'm just uncheck this box. So just start play mode and we check if it's working. So I grab the shield, I move it closer to my body and I just move around without the strange behavior. So next we are going to fix the issues of the position of the grab. So if you select the pistol, at the XR grab interactable, you can see a field called attach transform. So it's basically a position that it's going to be attached to. So we can modify this position based on our needs. So to create one, I'm just going to right click, create empty. I'm going to call it attach transform. And I'm going to drag it to this attach transform field. Okay, right now it's not going to do anything because we need to find it, the position what we want. And it can be a real tricky because on play mode, it doesn't update real time. So it's just a drag to set the right position. But there's a real useful trick that we can use. And this is the dynamic attach feature. It's basically allows us to grab any object at any position and it's going to be that position that we are attached to. I'm just going to demonstrate it the bigger object. So I'm going to enable the dynamic attach on the shield. So if we start play mode, so as you can see, now I can grab it any position I want to. And because if I grab it at any position, and if you check it out in the inspector, you can see there's a left hand controller dynamic attach transform has been created. So I can copy these components and paste it back to my attach transform. And after if I disable the dynamic attach, I'm going to be able to grab it at this exact location every time I'm grabbing it. So let's use this feature. So I'm going to select the pistol, add the shield and the third. I'm just going to enable the dynamic attach. And I'm also going to add each of them empty attach transform component. Okay, so just need to do it one by one. So start play mode and start with the pistol. So I'm just trying to grab it at the right position. Yeah, that looks decent. So I'm just gonna hold the grip. And in Unity, you can see the dynamic attach transform just copy and exit play mode. And now we can paste this component values. So if we go back to the pistol and disable the dynamic attach and start play mode. So if you grab the pistol, it's going to have this attach transform position. So let's do the same with the other two. Let's try it out. So start with the pistol. Yeah, perfect. And the shield. Yeah, looks all right. And then the third. Perfect. It might not be visible in the video, but if you move the third and the shield, it has some jittery movement. And the instantaneous pistol is 
really smooth. So the reason is because the instantaneous removed the rigid body. So its position is being updated in the update function. For the kinematic and the velocity tracking position is updated in the fixed update function. Which means Unity's physics update is set to a certain value. So it's always going to update that much. Which means basically it's frame rate independent. So if we check it out in the edit uh, project settings time and you can see the fixed time step it's 0 0.02 which means 50 calculation per second and the quest in my case right now at 90 hertz so if i set it to 1 divided by 90 and start play mode it's going to be as smooth as the instantaneous But bear in mind, this is really heavy calculation, so it, it can slow down your game significantly. So I'm going to say back to the original settings. So we are going to start with a simple one. We are going to add haptic feedback to our controllers. And with the XR Interaction Toolkit, it's quite easy to do. We only have to go to the XR Origin, select the left and right hand controller, and at the direct interactor open the haptic event and based on when you want the haptic events to happen just tick the event when you want it so in my case i'm going to use the on select entered and here you can set the haptic intensity and the duration so i'm going to set the haptic intensity to all the way up to one and the duration i'm going to say it's 0 0.08 seconds and start play mode and let's try it so now if I pick up an object, I'm going to feel the haptic feedback and yeah, I do. And of course you can play with these settings and get what's the best for you. Okay, next we are going to do a bullet and we will be able to shoot with our gun. So to do that, just go to the hierarchy, right click, uh, 3D object and I'm going to create a sphere. I'm going to reset its transform and change the scale to 0 0.0. Five. Now I'm going to create a material. So first I'm going to create a folder. Material. And here I'm going to create a material. And call it bullet. Yeah, I'm just going to change the color to red. And I'm going to apply it to the bullet. I'm going to rename it to bullet as well and back to the assets folder and I'm going to create a prefab folder. Okay, I'm just going to drag the bullet to this folder and now I can delete it from the hierarchy. Okay, so to be able to shoot, we need to add a grip to our pistol. So what we are going to do when we grab the pistol and, and we pull the trigger on the controller, actually we are firing an event, uh, which is the activate event. If you remember in my previous video, we checked out the, the bindings of this new input system. So we are going to fire an activate event. So here we are going to call that function. Of course, we need a C sharp script for it. So just create one. So I'm just going to create a fire script. And if I open the fire script, we are going to need a reference to our uh, bullet object. So, so I'm just going to create a serialized field private uh, game object. I'm going to call it bullet. And if we go back to Unity, now we see an empty field. So, so I'm just going to drag the bullet prefab to the bullet field. Okay. <clears throat> In the C sharp script, I'm going to create a public function so our xrgrab interactable script can access it. So let's create a public void. I'm going to call it fire bullet. And in here, first, I'm just going to instantiate the bullet. So as you can see in the instantiate function, we are going to need an object, what we are going to instantiate a vector free position so where we're going to instantiate and also a rotation 
a quaternion rotation, which means uh, what rotation we want it to be instantiated. So to have this position and rotation, we are going to need a spawn point. So go back to Unity and open up the pistol. And if we open it up, uh, we just need to create an empty object, set it to local. So I'm just add, adding an empty game object. I'm going to rename it to spawn point. And if I change the coordinate system from global to local, then I'm going to be able to move it inside. I'm going to move it to in front of the pistol. It's important to not put it inside because it's going to collide with our pistol. So I'm just move it slightly in front of it. Okay, now we got the spawn point. So I'm just going back to the script and I'm going to create a reference for it. So again, serialized field, private, and this time it's going to be transform. I'm going to call it the spawn point. So in the instantiate function, now we can add the uh, bullet. So this is going to be the object where it's going to um, instantiate. And the position is the spawn point dot position. And we are not changing the uh, rotation, so it can be spawn point that rotation. If we go back to Unity, select the pistol. Now we can add the spawn point to the spawn point field. Okay, the only thing that left us to do is on the XR grab interactable, select the interactable events, and on the activate event, so just drag the fire script to the activate one. And here, go to the fire, so it's going to be the script. And here you can see the fire bullet function. So select that one, and if we start Unity, so if we press the trigger, as you can see we are instantiating the bullets. Okay, but as you can see, they are just floating in the air. So to actually do something, we need to add physics to it. So just select the bullet prefab, and add a component called rigid body. This is basically going to enable us to use Unity's physics system. So if we go back to the script, so if we want our bullet to have a speed, then we need to store it in a variable. So this is going to be a game object. I'm going to call spawned bullet. So now we will be able to reference its components. So if we get the rigid body, then we can add a speed to it. So let's do that. So start a spawn bullets dot get component and we're going to have the uh, rigid body component uh, dot velocity and here we need to specify a direction and a speed variable so the directions will be the spawn point the uh, forward this is going to be the z-axis and we need to multiply it by bullet speed so i'm just going to call it bullet speed and i'm also create a variable for it. So serialized field, private, it's going to be a float value and I'm just going to copy it and paste it. At first I'm going to set it to 10 and we can adjust it in the inspector. So let's go back to Unity. And here we have the bullet speed, the bullet and the spawn point all set up. So again, if uh, this speed won't be enough, we just need to increase it here. So hit play mode. And if I pull the trigger, it does work. So one more thing on the bullet prefab, we need to uh, change the collision detection to continuous. Uh, this is because it's a fast moving object and this will improve the detection of the bullet when it goes to, for example, to the crane and bombs into it. And it will reduce the number of issues when it just goes through the crane without uh, colliding with it. So one more thing, um, so in our script, there's one more thing we should do is we need to destroy our instantiated bullets after, um, let's say, five seconds. So to do that, just call a destroy function. We are going to destroy the bullet 
and and let's say five seconds after it's instantiated. Okay, just start play mode and let's see. If I fire a bullet, then after five seconds it should be destroyed. Yeah, and it's gone. So one last thing for this video. Um, if we grab an object with one hand, it's perfectly fine. But if you grab it with the other, uh, the position is off. This is because on each object, we need to uh, attach transform for each of our hands. So to do that, we would need to attach transform here. And we should be able to tell which hand is actually grabbing this object. Luckily, we have a way to do that. So I'm just going to create a new script called fixed exa grab interactable. Let's create that script and open it up. So we need to use the XR interaction toolkit in here. So using using Unity Engine dot XR dot interaction dot toolkit. And here, if we change this from mono behavior to XR grab interactable, then we will be able to override some of its functions. I'm going to override the on select entered. And here, this space is basically mean if we change anything here after that runs, it's going to continue the rest of the function. So here, we are going to need two variables for each um, attached transform. So I'm going to create a serialized field private transform. So I'm going to call it left hand attached transform. And I'm just going to copy and paste it and rename it to right hand touch transform. Okay, let's go back to Unity. And we are going to differentiate our hands by using tags. So let's create two tags. One's going to be the left hand. And I'm going to name the other one right hand. So back to the left hand controller, I'm set it to left hand and on the right hand controller, Say so to right hand. So back in the script, if we grab it with the hand with the left hand tag, then we are going to use the left hand attach transform and, and with the right hand tag, we are going to use the right hand attach transform. So we are going to need, need an if statement. So let's start with args dot interactor object dot, dot transform dot compare tag. And if it's a left hand, then we are going to set the attach transform to the left hand attach transform. Attach transform equals left hand attach transform. And if the args the interactor object the transform the compare tag is right hand, then we are going to set the attach transform to the right hand attach transform. And after this check, the whole function is going to work as before. So let's go back to Unity. So on the pistol, we just have to delete the XR grab interactable because we already have this fixed XR grab interactable. Again, we have to select the interaction manager. And down here, you can see the left hand attached transform and the right hand attached transform. So in my case, the attached transform is set to my right hand. So I'm just going to rename it to right hand attached transform. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it left hand attach transform and what I'm going to do is based on my previous video if you haven't seen that uh, check it out I'm just gonna select the pistol enable the dynamic attach and start play mode and I'm just going to grab it with my left hand in the right position let's say this is right and I'm just going to copy the dynamic attach transform exit play mode and I'm going to paste these component values. And back here, I'm just uh, disable the dynamic attach. Oh, I need to rename it to left hand attach transform. My bad. The fixed XR grab interactable, I'm just going to grab the left hand attach transform and drop it in the left hand attach transform. And the same with the right hand attach transform. Okay, now the dynamic attach uh, is disabled so start play mode and let's see so 
So as you can see, it doesn't work and it's because I misspelled the right hand. And this is exactly the reason why we need to be careful with strings. So I'm just going to untag it and the tag, I'm just going to delete it and add a new one called right hand. And hopefully this works now. Right, let's start play mode again. And yeah, it does work perfectly now. So we also gonna need a target. Uh, I'm gonna use a free asset from the asset store. It's a low poly training dummy. You can find the link in the description. So I'm just gonna import that. Once it's imported, you can place it somewhere in our word. As you can see, we have a pink material, so we need to upgrade it to the universal render pipeline. And to how to do that, you can find it in my first video. Or just quickly go to window, rendering, render pipeline converter. We need to take these, initialize and convert. Yeah, it works now. So right now we are just going to make a simple script. It's gonna call the target dummy. And once it's opened, I'm just going to delete the update and start function. And I'm going to use a function called onCollisionEnter. And what we are basically going to do is if it detects our bullet within its collider, then it's going to give us a message. So if we want to identify a bullet, then we can use uh, tags. To do that, go to the prefab folder, select the bullet and we are going to add a new tag. I'm going to call it bullet. And again, I'm gonna apply it to the bullet. So if we go back to the script, then if the collider's trigger will be bullet, then it's going to give us a message. So if other, the other is uh, gonna be the thing that's gonna collide with our collider. So other the game object the compare tag and if it's bullet then we are going to write something else in the console. So debug.log and I'm going to say I've been hit. Yeah, we can go back to Unity. As you can see, the shooting doesn't work. The reason is because we have a new fixed XR grab interruptible script. And if you remember, we have added the fire script to the activate event. So we need to do that again. So at the activate event, just add one to the list and drag the fire script in there. And here just uh, select the fire bullet function. Oh, and one more thing, uh, we need to add a collider to our target dummy. I'm just going to use a simple box collider now. And I'm just going to adjust its size, Let's say like that. Yeah, and as you can see, it does work. So this is going to be fairly easy. All we need to do is go to the Polygon Starter Pack prefabs, and we need to find the door frame. There it is. Just rotate it a little bit. And then I'm just going to drag the door in. And now what we're going to do is just uh, make it its uh, child object and reset its transform. Now we need to drag it to the hinge position. So just give or take. And now we can rotate it as a door. I'm just going to give it a different material. Let's go to the materials and I'm going to select the gray one. Now it doesn't really matter if it's uh, colliding or not at this point, because it's going to be just a simplified version. First, we need to add a rigid body. We don't need the gravity in this case. And I'm also going to add something called hinge joint. And this one's basically will allow us to rotate it around an axis. So right now, as you can see, it rotates around the X axis, but we need to rotate it around the Y axis. So all we need to do is just change the axis, the X to zero and the Y to one. Now, if we check it out, now it's going to rotate around, around the Y axis. There's a few options what we can set and we will get back to it in a minute. But first we need a grabbable knob. So to do that, I'm again 
going to create an empty game object and I'm going to move it to the knobs position. And I'm gonna add a sphere collider. I'm gonna change the radius to 0 0.1. Yeah, looks all right. Again, we need to add a rigid body. I won't use uh, gravity again. And we need an XR grab interactable. But right now, if we grab this one, it's going to move independently to the door. So we need to fix its position to the door. And there's something called fixed joint. And we need to grab the door to the connected body. And now it should be working. I'm going to rename this object to knob. And if we start the game, just let's see what happens. And if I grab it, it moves really strange. So there's uh, multiple problems with it right now. Uh, first, our box collider is colliding with the frames collider. So what we can do is so what we can do is create two layers and just disable the collision between them. So we need to add two layers. So I'm just going to create one for the door and one for the frame. And I'm going to apply it to the frame. I don't want the children to be to have this um, layer. And I'm going to change the doors to door. So we still need to disable the uh, collision between the door and the frame. So to do that, just go to the edit, project settings, physics, and at the bottom, just disable the door and the frame collision. Uh, second problem is the movement type. If you remember in my previous video, I talked about these three different movement types. If you want to know more, just check out in the info card. So in a nutshell, right now it's an instantaneous movement type, which means it doesn't use uh, any physics. So if we change it to the velocity tracking, it should work as we want to. Okay, and let it play. So there is two issues. First, if we grab the other knob, it doesn't really work, or it just simply snaps to the other one. And the second one is the door can move all around the axis. So let's fix these two issues as well. So I'm just going to duplicate the knob and I'm going to move it to the other knob's position. I'm going to check if the collider is OK and that should work. And if we go back to the door, so on the hinge joint there's something called limits and if we use that one we can set a minimum and a maximum degree of limits. So if I say to 90 degrees it should allow it to rotate 90 degrees. So let's try this one out. Yeah, and as you can see, it perfectly works. Both of the knobs and get stuck when it reaches the 90 degree limit. There's two more thing. Uh, it's something called spring and motor. The spring is basically pulls the door back to its uh, zero position. And the motor is doing the same. But while the spring is accelerating to that position, the motor is just reaching a target velocity and, and rotate to the zero position with that speed. So I'm just going to demonstrate the difference between the spring and the motor. So this is for the um, spring. As you can see, it accelerates. And this is for the motor. And it just uh, goes with the same speed till it reaches the zero position. So that is the basics of making a door for a VR environment. So first select the target dummy and in the inspector add the animator component, open the controller. In the animator window, first go to the parameters tab and add two triggers. We will need these ones to play the different animation based on if it needs to activate itself or die. So call one of them uh, activate and the other one death. So on the base layer, we will need free state for this object. First, we need an idle animation, which will be automatically played by the animator. Then we will need an activate state when we trigger it by one of our action, for example, walk into a trigger area. And finally, uh, that state when we hit the object. So let's start with the idle animation. In this tutorial, we don't need really any fancy animations. So I use a little trick for this one. All we need to do is go to the assets, training dummy, mesh. And if you open up the training dummy FBX file, then you can see a died and a pushed animation. Select the died animation and push Ctrl D to duplicate it. Rename this one to idle. So 
why are we doing it? If you play the died animation, you can see at the end it just lies on the ground. So we can use these keyframes to use it as an idle state when it's lying on the ground. So open up the idle animation and select everything except the last frame and delete it. And then select the last frame and drag it to the front. Save this one and close it up. Now head back to the animator window and create these states. First create an idle. So right click create empty. I'm going to rename it to idle and I'm going to set it a, a default layer. And we can delete the push animation and I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it activate and we can rename the died animation to dead. So in the idle state, drag the idle animation to the motion field. And next at the death stage, drag the death animation to the motion field. And at last, the activate state, we will use the death animation again with the little trick. In the inspector, under the motion field, there's a speed variable. With this, we can control the speed of the animation. If we set it to, let's say, 0.5, it will play in slow motion. And if we set it to 2, it will speed up. But here's a little trick. If we set it to minus 1, then it will play the animation backwards. And if we think about the death animation, imagine it backwards, it will basically stand up, which is exactly what we need at this moment. So just drag the died animation to the motion field. So the last thing we need to do here is connect these states to each other. So right click on the idle state, make transition and select the activate state. Click the transition line and in the inspector disable the has exit time and set the transition duration to zero. It means when we trigger this transition, the activate animation will be played immediately. Under these, at the conditions, add one to the list and, and select the activate trigger. And this is the trigger from the parameter step. And repeat the same with the death state. So make a transition, select the transition line, disable the exit time and set the transition duration to zero sec. Add the condition to the list and change the activate trigger to the death trigger. With all that set up, all we need to do is tell the animator when we trigger these events. Well, how can we do that? Of course, with the C Sharp script. If you remember one of my previous video, we set up a script for the target dummy. Check it out, the link in the description. So open up this script. This is going to be the target dummy. As you can see, there's the on collision enter function where if the colliding object's tag is bullet, then it writes to the console a message. Um, I've been hit. So all we need to do in this case is change the console message to triggering the death state in the animator. If you remember in the second episode, we did something similar with our hands animation. The only difference was that we used float values instead of triggers. So here's a little challenge for you. Stop the video and try to figure it out yourself. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Did you figure it out? Did you find another solution? Let me know in the comments. And here's my approach. First, we need to reference the animator. So serialize field, private animator. I'm going to call it a dummy animator. So here, just uh, delete the debug.log message <coughs> and replace it with a dummy animator but set trigger and then here we are going to need the uh, death trigger don't forget to watch out for the spelling of the parameter's name so better just to copy it just to make sure so just like that and one little thing I would like to change instead of using a bullet tag change it to weapon. This is because if I want to be able to slay it with, for example, with a sword, it would be strange to tag it as a bullet. Or if I want to use both, then we need another or check in the if statement, for example, bullet. You can do that if you like that. For me, I just like to keep it simple. So I'm just going to delete it. So if you follow me, then don't forget to create a weapon tag and apply it to the sword and also to the bullet. Next, we need to set up how can we activate the dummies. 
So to do that, we will need a new function. Let's call it void activate dummy. And here we just need to set the activate trigger. Again, it's better just to copy it from the animator. So how can we call this method? Of course, with another C sharp script, and we will attach it to a game object where we are going to have a box collider trigger. So when the player walks into it, it's just going to trigger the activation. But right now we have a problem. If we have multiple target dummies, multiple places, we don't want to activate all of them in the same time. So we need to separate them into chunks and activate them in different trigger areas. So to do that, I will use one of the prefab just for the visual. If we go back, then go to the polygon starter pack prefabs. And here, I'm just going to use this plate, move it up a little. And here at the box collider, I'm just going to set it as a trigger and going to increase its size just to make sure we, when we walk into it, we are definitely hitting the trigger. Okay. And I'm going to add the new script where I'm going to call dummy trigger and open the script. So here, just delete the update and the start function. And here we need to store in a variable all the target dummies we want to activate. And for that, we need an array of game objects. So again, start with serialized field, private game object. And here we just need a brackets. And now this is a array and I'm going to name it target dummies. And again, we are going to need an untrigger enter. And for the logic, what we will do is if the player walks into this trigger, then it will iterate through all of the game objects, what the array contains and trigger the activate trigger through their script. So again, we are going to need an if statement and again, use a compare tag. So if the colliding objects tag is going to be player, then we want to iterate through to the array. For this iteration, we will use a for each loop. So the variable we need a game object and the collection is going to be the target dummies array. And in here we need to call the activate dummy function. But right now we can't do that because this is a private void. So we have to set it to public. So uh, here just dummies, the get component, target dummy dot activate dummy and this is the function what that we call in so that's it for the log logic you can close this up and in the inspector select first the target dummy we need to drag the animator component to the dummy animator field i'm just gonna duplicate it a few times and here i'm just gonna drag the target dummy to the array the ones that I want to activate. If I duplicate it and move it somewhere here and delete these ones and drag the other two to this array, then it should activate those two when we walk into this one. And don't forget the XR origins tag. It needs to be changed to a player. Now press start and try this out. Now, if I walk into this trigger area, these two target dummies get activated. And if I use the pistol, I can shoot them. Check it out. If I walk back into this trigger, it won't enable them again. This is because we don't have any transition line back to the idle or activate state. And if I walk into this trigger area, those dummies getting activated and I can use the sword to slay them. Perfect how to make a UI. To do that, we will need a Ray Interactor. So we need to create it on our hands. So to do that, let's go to the XR origin, camera offset and create a new empty object. Call one of them left hand Ray and the other one is right hand Ray. Okay, resets both uh, of the transforms and we need a few components. First, add the XR controller 
and select the left hand first and add the left hand preset and then the right hand and add the right hand preset okay now we can select both of them and add a xr ray interactor also we need a component called xr interactor line visual yeah this one adds automatically a line renderer and we can reduce it with like 0.05 right as you can see it it uh, has this pink material, which means it won't be rendered. So what we need is to create a new material. I'm going to call it line material. We need to change its shader to alpha blended pre multiply. And we select the left hand and right hand ray and add this material to it. And as you can see, it renders now. Okay, with all that cell, just create a UI now. So right click UI and we are need a canvas. As you can see now, it's uh, pretty big and it's because it's in overlay. So if I add, uh, let's say, a button to it, then if we go to the game mode, it always going to show it in the middle, wherever we look. But that's not what we need. We need it to place it somewhere in our world. We can do that with, on the canvas, just change the screen space overlay to word space. And I'm going to fix the scale and say 0 0.001 on all axes. Reset its position to 0, 0, 0. And now it's just a small canvas, what we have here. All right, I'm going to add a slider to it. I'm just going to move it up slightly, change its scale. Also, I'm going to change the scale of the button as well and move it slightly lower. And I'm going to add a, another one called, so I'm just going to add a drop down as well, increase its scale. And for the final one, I'm just going to create a background to it. So I add a panel and change the color to something grayish and increase its alpha value. As you can see now, it's all the objects are behind this panel. But if we change the order in under the canvas, first one, it will go to the back position right on the canvas we need to delete the graphics ray caster and add something called track device graphic ray caster and on the event system we need to remove the standalone input module and add the xr ui input module here all we need to do is select a preset and add the only one we have here and that's it i'm just going to move this canvas out of the way and rotate it a little and now if we press play mode, we can try it out. As you can see, it does work. You can select any option, press the button and toggle the slider. Also, right now we can, also we can do a distance grab, but right now it's not something we want. So, and also we don't want to see this line renderer all the time. So how can we do that? Well, it's pre pretty easy to make. Just select the right and left hand ray. At the XR Interactor Line Visual, if the, it's invalid color, just change it to change the alpha to zero. So it will be transparent on both of them. We can change this blocked one to zero as well. We won't need it right now. And on the valid color, I'm just going to change the alpha slightly at the start and slightly on the end. The next one we only want to use it on the UI system. So to do that, we can select the layers we want to use it on. So right now it use all the layers. If we select nothing and then select the UI and just the UI only, then we can hit play and we can see if it works. Yeah, right now we can not see the line renderer, but if we move it to the canvas, it shows up. Also, if we move it here it won't work so what can we use it for obviously we can use it for exit the game on the slider we can set the audio level or we can set for example the speed of our character and on the drop down we can select if we want to continuous turn or snap turn so right now just do that one i'm gonna delete the option c and, and rename the option a to snap turn and the option b to continuous turn okay and we need to create a script to control it and we just need to add to the xr origin the continuous turn provider 
I'm just gonna move it right under the snapshot provider and the presets I'm gonna add the XR default continuous turn provider the system I'm just selling the XR origin and we we probably just want to turn with the right hand joystick so I disable the left hand so by default I'm just gonna disable the continuous turn provider select the canvas and I'm gonna add the new script to it and I'm gonna name it drop drum script it doesn't really matter at this point point. and what we are going to do is reference these two scripts the action based snap turn provider and the action based continuous turn provider I just delete the start and the update function so I add two reference uh, a snap turn provider and the continuous turn provider. I'm going to create a function, a public function this time, because we are going to use it in the drop down element. I'm going to need a int integer for that one, and I'm going to call it index. If we go back to Unity and select the drop down, we can add a script to it. I'm going to drag the canvas there, and on the drop down script, we have a turn provider select what we just created and also you can find it down here turn provider select with an integer if we want it to work properly we need to select the the top one it's really important and right now if uh, this value is zero then it's going to select the first one the snap turn and if it's one it's going to select the second one if i have multiple one then it goes like zero one two three Okay, so we just basically need an if statement here. So if the index equals zero, then we want the snap turn to be enabled and the continuous turn to be disabled. And if the index is one, then we want it the other way, just like that. But yeah, and on the canvas, we need to drag the XR origin to both of them. And it's automatically going to select the action based snap turn provider and the action based continuous turn provider. So let's hit play. Yeah, and as you can see, it works perfectly. Yeah. One more thing on the button, just select the text and we are going to call it exit. And here we can make another public function and we are going to call it exit. The only thing we need in this function is uh, when we want to quit the game is application.quit. Obviously we can't quit in the editor, but if we want to check it, we can do a, a debug.log. It's exiting or quitting. Okay, then select the button, uh, add a one to the on click and drag the canvas there. Select the drop down script. Well, I should have named slightly different, but it doesn't really matter now. And select the exit script. Okay, and we can try it here. And if I press the exit button on the console, you can see an exit message. So it, it does work. Okay, I'm just gonna delete the debug.log and close the script. And now if we want, we can create a simple, simple scene to it and just add a few other game objects, like uh, whatever you like from the from the prefabs. So I'm gonna do that and see you in a bit. Oh yeah, and one more thing, uh, select our target dummies, open its script. We need to reference the box collider. So once we hit it and uh, it plays its death animation, the box collider still stays there. So we need to disable them. What we need to do is uh, get, get the component and when it's hit, we just disable it. So that's, that's all we need to do. Save it and close it up. And this is the game. Then how can we build it and make a proper game? Well, first we need to go to the edit project settings and depending on what we want to build to, if it's um, 
PC, it's already set up. But if you want to directly install it to the, let's say, Oculus Quest 2, then we need to enable the Android settings. Again, just enable the OpenXR. And under the OpenXR, just add some interaction layers like we did in our first video. So touch controller, Oculus profile. Okay. So if you want to build it to PC, then go to file, build settings. And right now it's on, it's on PC now and just press build and it's going to build our scene. We need to make sure the scenes, to, scenes in build is the one we have right here is selected. If you want to do that to Android, we need to switch devices. So just select Android and switch platform, right? Uh, on the device, we can select all and just head to the settings project settings layer and here we will have a few settings so that's it for this tutorial series if you liked it then hit the subscribe and like button and see you in the next one